again, uh, we are online on our Facebook page and at robertsdaleunity.com. Uh, we are Roberts Day United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Jonathan Hanson, and we welcome you today in the name and love of Christ. We're going to worship God today. We're going to lift our prayers together from wherever we are that we might join in with the Lord in the choir class. We're going to worship him. We're going to praise him. And we're going to hear from his word. We've been going through a series called uh, Glory Days, a series through the book of Joshua, uh, to look at what it means to be a promised land family, even in the, fi- even in the face of the trials and pains and adversity that we all face. So we're going to talk more about that today in the heart of the church as we look at this powerful message that is entitled, The Day the Sun Is Raised. And so we thank you for joining us. We ask that you would go ahead right now and uh, respond and react to this video, like or love it on Facebook, share it with some friends who think that this could be helpful in the name of Christ and share it. Uh, robertsdayunity.com is where you'll find that share. You can give today in the name of the Lord and worship him at robertsdayunity.com is where you'll find that today. Or you can mail your check to P.O. Box 3850, Robertsville, Alabama, 35275. One of the ministries that we've been getting to is the ministry to operate uh, this type of church in the name of Jesus Christ here. However, the next two Mondays, our food pantry will be closed. Uh, Because of the incredible spike in numbers that we've seen over the last week or two in our county, uh, we have pulled back even more to try to protect the people of our church. Uh, The office uh, is closed to visitors right now. Uh, We're just trying to protect you. We're trying to protect others in our community. So uh, the staff are only coming in for essential needs and trying to work work from home as much as possible. Our food pantry will be closed uh, again the next two Mondays, July 13th and July 20th, but we're anticipating them reopening after that. So thank you for the ways that you're partnering with us. Thank you this morning just for gathering with us as we worship God together. Now let us worship the name of his son, Jesus Christ, uh, because through him we are invited to be a friend of God. sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry, everything to God in prayer, oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear. trials and temptations, is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged, take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so knows our every weakness, take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, armored with the Lord of Cam, precious Savior still Christ will save thee, take it to the Lord in prayer, in his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a soulless there.
want to take our cares, but also our praises to the Lord this morning. Uh, but before we do so, happy birthday, Mr. Matt. We wish Matt a happy birthday on his birthday weekend. If you know someone who has a birthday, uh, again, we're trying to connect and do community as best we can in this way. And, and in some ways, that allows us uh, to connect in ways we otherwise couldn't. And so we celebrate that. If you know someone who has a birthday, an anniversary, some other life event to celebrate, uh, we would invite you right now to put that in the comment section and let us all celebrate uh, these praises together. We want to remember a very special family this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Bruce Campbell, a beloved and very longtime church member, went to be with the Lord this past week. He is now uh, in his eternal home permanently. Uh, Ruthie, his brother George, uh, his daughter Emily, uh, the rest of the family all continued this new journey of grief together, and we want to join them. We're going to celebrate and remember Bruce's life this afternoon. We're actually having a public service at the PZK Hall here in Robertsdale at 3 p.m. this afternoon. There's going to be a visitation before that at 1.30, beginning at 1.30, uh, and we'll conclude services at the graveside at Baldwin Memorial Cemetery on Highway 90. Uh, there are many people participating in the services. Bruce was a dearly loved person. Uh, our own sheriff, Hoss Mack, is going to give the message, and I'm excited uh, to get to watch him speak what God has laid on his heart to remember and honor this man of God. Hoss is going to do an awesome job. He always does. Uh, Bruce also had a hospice chaplain uh, that ministered to him greatly over the last few years. His grandson, Kyle Irwin, is going to speak and share, uh, and then I'll be uh, concluding the services at the graveside. So please pray for all of these individuals. Pray for this family. Thank you, church, for the way that you have already reached out in support and communicated your love. Uh, and there are many others in our community, uh, even in our church right now, who need our prayers for various reasons. Uh, the COVID-19 virus is hitting closer to home as we hear the names of more and more people uh, in our own county uh, that we know are being affected right now. Um, we are sharing those via our email list. If you would like to be a part of that, uh, please send a Facebook message to the church Facebook page or go to our website, hit the connect button, share with us your email address and say, I would like to be on your email list and we will add you so that you can receive our e-news and also our prayers and praises updates. So let's go to the Lord together now trusting that we have a friend and an intercessor whose name is Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, it is a privilege to boldly approach your throne of grace and ask for mercy in time of need. Thank you that you invite us to do so with confidence as your children, knowing that we can run to the throne of our God and King and that you wait to hear from us. You actually are eager for us to turn over our cares and concerns to you. So, Lord, in this moment, we do so. Brothers and sisters, I, I would invite you to name in your hearts right now any worries, any concerns, any needs, maybe that you have in your own life, in your family, others that you are thinking about for whom your heart is heavy in this moment, and would you lift them to God in prayer? And now as the people of God, I ask this question because there is always an answer. Even in the midst of all we are going through, for what this morning can you praise God? For what this morning can you give thanks? Can you give adoration? Can you celebrate that God is real, that he is alive and that he is at work and you have received a blessing from the Lord? Would you name that in your heart in this moment? God, for our church, we pray. For our communities, we pray. For our nation, we pray. For our world, Lord Jesus, for which you died, we pray. God, break our hearts for what breaks your heart. Give us compassion to see others more in the way that you see. Lord, especially those that we are tempted not to see at all or to pass over. Would you give us your eyes and would you give us your heart? Make us more like Jesus. For we pray in his name and in the way that he taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. One of the things uh, we have talked about before as a church is how uh, in our faith, uh, day seven became day one. Uh, it was the first day of the week, the Bible says, that Jesus was raised from the dead. And so when we come together on Sunday morning in this way, when we come together in worship, when we come together and pray, when we come together and reflect on God and focus and center ourselves and to hear from his word, we are actually orienting all the days that follow. Today is not us um, falling exhaustedly across the finish line of one week and saying, God, here's my leftovers. It's us putting a stake in the ground and dare, uh, declaring at the beginning of a new week that God, everything about our lives is centered on you. You are our foundation. You are our source. And so we worship you this morning. Let's continue to worship the Lord.
Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. Amen. Well, one thing I forgot to say about the services uh, this afternoon that, that I'm actually going to try to help with, I completely forgot about, is we are going to try to live stream uh, Bruce Campbell's service uh, on our Facebook page right here at Robertsdale. So five, ten minutes before the service, we'll try to go live uh, so that we can capture that service. Uh, I'm going to warn you, it may not be the highest tech thing in the world. We're going to do a lot like we've been trying to do and make the best of this on Sunday mornings with my tripod and cell phone, uh, but we're going to try to do that. We're even going to try to embed it on our website for those of you who are not on Facebook. So if you're watching this on the website, uh, robertstillumc.com, just like on Sundays, you should be able to go to the website uh, to the Watch Live tab or robertstillumc.com forward slash live. Refresh the page just a few minutes before three, and you should be able to join us. Again, uh, that's what we're hoping. That's what we're going to try to do. You know technology, but we're going to make the best. Well, good morning again. Uh, I am so grateful uh, that God has been speaking words of encouragement to us. There is no time when we have needed the gospel more. I'm convinced of it. There's no time when the church has needed the encouragement and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm excited about what the Lord is going to speak to us today. I have a question for you as we begin, and that is, where were you on August 21st, 2017? Do you remember? Where were you? What were you doing? Anybody? You remember where you were? August 21st? Kids had just gone back to school. It was just a little bit into school. And there was all this hype about an eclipse it was the first time since like the 1970s that a total solar eclipse could be seen across parts of the United States. And, and many of us in other areas at least got partial eclipse. People were buying all kinds of eclipse paraphernalia. There were eclipse glasses that were sold out on Amazon because everybody wanted to enjoy the eclipse. Because um, in one lifetime, there had barely been another day like it. And already people are looking towards the next eclipse. A big deal was made because it was such a, a rare event, and we wanted to see it and take part of it. Such a rare event also happened in the story of Joshua, and it's enough to want to spend a whole Sunday on what happens in one chapter, chapter 10. So in the book of Joshua, chapter 10, 
it says, Now Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem. And by the way, this is the first mention of the city of Jerusalem in the Old Testament. Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it, doing to Ai and its king just as he had done to Jericho and its king, and that the people of Gibeon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and had become their allies. He and his people were very much alarmed at this because Gibeon was an important city, like one of the royal cities. It was larger than Ai, and all its men were good fighters. So Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, appeared to Hoham, king of Hebron, Piram, king of Jarmuth, Japhia, king of Lachish, and Debir, king of Eglon. Come and help me attack Gibeon, he said, because it has made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon, joined forces. They moved up with all their troops and took up positions against Gibeon, and they attacked it. The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal. Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Horon and cut them down all the way to uh, Azekah and Makeda. As they fled before Israel on the road down from Beth Horon to Azekah, the Lord hurled large hailstones down on them and more of them died from the hail than were even killed by the swords of the Israelites. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jasher. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp at Gilgal. Now the story goes on about how Joshua and the Israelites did indeed defeat all of the five kings. But what an amazing story. That's just the first half uh, of chapter 10. In fact, that's like the first third of Joshua chapter 10. You can read the rest later today. But I want to hone in on this particular story because... It's one of the most miraculous things that happens in the book of Joshua. Joshua is a book about military conquest. It's a book in which God tells his people, I have given you the promised land, the land I promised way back to my servant Moses and all the people that have been delivered from Egypt, but they spent 40 days in the wilderness. The time has come for me to give you what I promised to your parents. Take possession of the land. So it's a book of military conquest. But there's some miraculous things in this book that show that it's not just God's people conquering in a military fashion the land that God said he gave to them. It's also a book in which God acts in supernatural ways. He uh, separates the waters at the Jordan for the Israelites to cross in the same way that he parted the waters of the Red Sea. He supernaturally has the Israelites march around Jericho, which is one of the strangest military strategies of all time. And at the shout on the seventh day, all the walls came crumbling down. And now at this battle uh, where Joshua is fighting for the Gibeonites, he prays and commands the sun and moon to stand still, and it actually happens. Did you catch the other supernatural things in the story? I mean, the sun standing still would have been enough but God sent large hailstones, which, which in Scripture, hail uh, is actually a sign of God's judgment and wrath. And when there is hail, there is usually thunder and lightning. And so there's a lot of climactic weather things going on while this battle is happening. And then Joshua commands the sun and moon to be still. And the story out of the book of Jasher that is uh, dropped into the book of Joshua tells us that the sun and moon stood still for about a day 
for as long as Joshua and the Israelites needed to complete this military campaign and have victory. So we see human action and divine activity combining to give victory. It's an amazing story. And many sermons have been preached and many books have been written about the power of audacious prayers and how we are to believe God for the impossible and the radical and the supernatural. I have preached those sermons. I will continue to preach those sermons. And maybe for you today, that's the sermon that you need to hear. Right now, right here, you need to hear that God comes to the aid of his people in supernatural ways, that we can pray huge, impossible, God-sized prayers. And if we are walking in obedience into the promises of God, we can see God do the impossible. As Jesus even said, all things are possible with God. With man, this is not possible. But with God, all things are possible. However, I have an additional thought today that I think might even be more relevant to where we are as God's people in this unique time. And that is that uh, there's a lot of debate about when this story happened. There's a lot of debate uh, because of the history of recorded history uh, and when people started recording things and being able to date things. Um, So just for the sake of argument, let's just say, hypothetically, that this happened 2,000 years B.C., or BCE. And now it is the year 2020. That's 4,020 years ago that this story might have happened, you know, give or take. Uh, And if that's 4,020 years, that's 1,467,300 days. 1,467,300 days since God heard Joshua and made the sun stand still. And the story ends by saying there had never been a day like it before and there's never been a day like it since. So here's my question for us today, church. What about the other 1,467,299 days? Because see, I think that the majority of the time is more the story of the church. The story of the church is the story of a people facing great adversity and the sun not standing still, the sun continuing to go down, us wondering when the victory is going to come, us wondering when the period of trial is going to be over, us wondering what is going to get us to the other side of this challenge or through this trying season, what are we going to do in the meantime? And I would say that God's message through the book of Joshua is the same all the other days the sun is not standing still than it is on the day he makes the sun be still. And that message is, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Remember, the Israelites didn't have victory over Ai the first time. In fact, things were going on in their own community that the community didn't even know about. And Joshua pleaded with the Lord and said, oh, that you would have just left us on the other side of the Jordan. We were supposed to be a victorious people, and now we've suffered a great defeat. There have even been casualties. And remember what God said? Why are you down on the dirt? Get up. Rise up. Be the, be the person you've always been. Be the man of God you've always been. Even in the face of this defeat, you were to have the same strength and courage that you had in the moment of victory. You were not to be afraid. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When they faced Jericho, the message was be strong and courageous. When they were defeated at Ai, the message was still be strong and courageous. When they went back and had victory over Ai, the message was be strong and courageous. When they were deceived by the Gibeonites so that now they made covenant with the Gibeonites. Because the Gibeonites tricked the Israelites into it. The message was be strong and courageous. And now they are obligated to defend the Gibeonites because five kings are coming after them. The message is still be strong and courageous. It reminds me of so many stories in scripture, especially in the Old Testament, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember what what they said when they were talking to King Nebuchadnezzar who said that he was gonna throw them in the fiery furnace? They said, our God will save us But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, we will never bow down and worship another. He is our God. And whether he delivers us in the way that we are praying and hope he will or not, our response is the same. We put our faith and trust in him. This is an amazing call to the people of God, especially in a time like we're in right now. 
And that message doesn't change in the New Testament. The story of the church is replete with messages of perseverance and endurance and and patient endurance and staying strong and keeping the faith and not falling away when things get tough. And as I prayed about this message this week, and uh, I remembered that Joshua's name was actually the same name as Jesus, Yeshua, God saves, I scratched my head and I asked the question, okay, Lord, this is an amazing story about the sun standing still and Joshua and the Israelites having victory, but what about Jesus? What about Jesus? How does Jesus change our reading of this story? And then it hit me. There was another day when the sun was still. There was a day when the Son of God was still hanging on a cross. He was suffering what looked like defeat, so that you and I could have victory over the kings that were coming against us. He was still on the cross so that days later he could be raised and you and I could once and for all have victory over sin and death. It's an amazing event that changed everything even more so than the victory of Joshua and the Israelites, even more so than the people of God going into a geographic promised land. Jesus has led you and me And those who follow and love him and trust him and are strong and courageous in him to a spiritual promised land against which no enemy can prosper. God made the sun be still. And I've been reading this book. In fact, I've been sharing on Daily Devos this book by Marilyn Vansel. Uh, and I learned how to say her name. I watched a YouTube interview where she was interviewed and the, the person said Marilyn Vansel. So I finally got her name right. But she talks about in this book the true self and the false self. And she talks about the two uh, criminals who were crucified on either side of Jesus. And she said they are uh, two great examples of the response of the true self and the false self to Jesus. You have one criminal uh, who says, I'm going to be tortured for my sins. I've hurt others and I'm sorry. I... Or you have the other criminal that says, I don't deserve this, I'm sorry for nothing, and I will never forgive those who got me into this mess. You have the criminal mocking Jesus and pleading with him, move, move from this cross. If you are the Son of God, get yourself down, save yourself and save us. In the last moments, it's amazing because one criminal is completely letting go of the life that's about to end, and he's turning, he's turning to Jesus for the promise of eternal life that he hopes to have in him. The other criminal is clinging and not giving up on the very life that got him to this place. And he's ceasing to let go of it even as it's about to end. Those are our choices of how to respond to Jesus. And if we will put our trust in the son who God made still on that day, who chose to be still for yours and my sake, then we can also have faith in that day that came just a few days later when the grave was not still and it shook and the stone was miraculously rolled away and God raised his son so that he could raise you and me to new life too. Those of us who have this spirit in us, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. So I ask you today, what can separate you from the love of Christ? Can hardship, can trial, Can famine, sword, separate you from the love of Christ? Nothing. Now that's not to make light of our suffering. If anything, that's to say we have a theology that helps us right in the midst of our suffering. One of the things my family has been talking about during this incredibly challenging and unprecedented time, all of us are trying to figure out how to navigate, how to get through it, how to make decisions properly, how to serve people. What does it look like now to love God? What does it look like to love neighbor? What does it look like to be the church for heaven's sake? Because we've never done this before, at least not in this way. And one of the things that we've been talking about is how if our faith completely falls apart on us right in the middle of suffering, it has no substance at all. And I praise God that suffering is exactly the place when our faith matters most. We serve a God who came and was one of us and suffered not just as we suffered, but suffered for us so that even through suffering, he could bring us out on the other side. So we can be strong and courageous in a world that seems a long way off from being safe because God is with us. I want to share some scriptures in closing today, all from the New Testament uh, that I take great comfort in. And so I want to share it with you uh, as a way of wrapping up this message. 
putting our hope in the word of God and clinging to it, especially in hard times. 1 Peter 5.10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Then in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present age are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Then in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 8, 28, very popular verse. Now remember, Romans 8, 18 was just talking about suffering. And then in verse 28, he says, and we know God works all things together for the good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, one of my favorites. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And finally, Jesus' own words in John chapter 16, verse 33, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. Brothers and sisters, because God's son was still, you can stand firm. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for the day that you made the sun stand still. We thank you that you have reminded us that anything is possible with you, that you will go to supernatural lengths to bless, protect, give victory to your children if we will walk in faithful obedience to you. But Lord, we also thank you for the day that your son was still. We thank you that he knows our sufferings because he shared in them. And he suffered greatest of all so that we could have victory over our greatest enemies, sin and death. And if we have victory over them, then who, Lord, can stand against us? What weapon formed can prosper? Of what should we be afraid? And what can separate us from your love? And the resounding answer to all those rhetorical questions is nothing and no one. So, Lord, we cling to you today. We ask you to give strength and courage to your saints as we continue to endure, as we continue to persevere. We pray, God, for the leaders and servants all around us who are having to do life and live out their vocation in terribly anxiety-producing, challenging, exhausting ways like never before. We pray that you would uh, gird them with your supernatural strength, that you would send your Holy Spirit to speak words of encouragement, to encourage them, and that you would continue to raise up your saints to be a witness in this world and in this time, that just like in the days of Joshua, your reputation would spread all across the land because of the evident work of what you're doing among your people. We pray that we would be those people, and we pray that you would help us to suffer well as we look to you for your glory. In Jesus' name.
Well, that is our benediction for today. Thank you so much for gathering with us to worship the Lord together and begin a new week by focusing on Him and on His promises and what He has done for us in the life, death, and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. If you missed the beginning of this video and you would like to request prayer, you can do so at robertsdellumc.com forward slash prayer. If you would like to give, you can visit robertsdellumc.com forward slash give. Uh, we are closing completely our facilities uh, for the next two weeks, including our office. We, we were trying to have office hours for people to bring their gifts during the week. Uh, our offices are going to be closed except for essential work over the next week or so. Uh, also, our food pantry will be closed tomorrow and next Monday, July 20th. Uh, but we are anticipating and hoping uh, that is, if the numbers don't continue to uh, rise or stay where they are, that we'll be able to resume that as soon as possible. In the meantime, uh, thank you for being the church with and uh, and, and through Robertsdale, uh, from wherever you are. Join us this afternoon right here on our Facebook page or our website as we attempt to live stream the service for Bruce Campbell. Continue to pray for them and all of the many families uh, that are struggling during this time. Thank you. God bless you. Have a blessed week. This is Pastor Jonathan from Robertsdale UMC wishing you grace and peace.